Hey everybody, thank you for dropping into DeFi Divi. My name is Matthew and welcome to the channel where we talk about crypto, decentralized finance, and I do deep dives into projects. I like to research teams and venture capitalists and use cases and the problems being solved and the communities around projects. Uh, lots of fun for me, actually, I geek out on this stuff. Anyway, today, just a quick price video because the markets are doing some cool stuff today. Uh, for those of us who've been holding, um, it's nice to see a lot of green coming in today. Okay, so the first one I wanna talk about today is XRP because this one is having a really nice move and we've been, this one has been suppressed for the entire bull market. Uh, I have a feeling this one's going to do really well if we are even in a bear market, which doesn't look like it now. But this one, I mean, I'm not a long, I'm not a technical analyst, but if you look at this chart, like 217, here's 2017 when we had that crazy parabolic uh, bull run that lasted, I think, about six weeks. And then, of course, it crashed like crazy because nothing like this is sustainable. And then, you know, this over this three or four year period, like we got 2017, 2018, 2019, just a nice rounding, rounding support and rounding bottom all the way up to here. We remember that. And then the SEC scare. And then this is just forms like this nice, I don't know, I guess it's a pennant. And I'm not a technical analyst, like I said, but I've seen this chart before. And and the people I follow also, they just, who are good analysts, um, this chart looks really promising, really amazing. I think XRP could do uh, really well. But what's going on with the price today? Why is it doing so well? Well, the entire market is doing well. But there was a news piece that came across my feed that to me, it sounds like the biggest banking news I've ever heard in relation to Ripple because I've been uh, in this project for a long time, probably since 20, I started buying this one in like January of 2019. And uh, this one has, you know, been doing, forming partnerships with banks for a while and solving problems, basically in problems related to international settlement you know, you send U.S. dollars to Mexico, have it land in pesos in a bank over there. And if you do that with SWIFT, it takes a long time. It's expensive. Uh, and so Ripple solves this problem really quickly uh, with their RippleNet, and, which uses XRP. And they are partnered with many banks. But, they're, you know, often we hear about a partnership and you're like, okay, I don't think I've heard of that bank. Or maybe we've heard, you know, some upcoming partnerships with big banks um, and this isn't a partnership, but just to have them named is probably the biggest bank I've ever, uh, probably the biggest news from a bank I've ever heard in relation to uh, Ripple. And I quote, Ripple identified as opportunity in payments alongside Circle by Goldman Sachs. So Goldman Sachs, probably the, one of the biggest financial institutions in the world, is now identifying Ripple as a possible payment solution. I mean, that's huge. And I quote, a recent report by Goldman Sachs Investment Banking Division, overview of digital assets and blockchain identifies Ripple as an opportunity in payments alongside Circle, a peer-to-peer -peer payment technology, and Coinbase. The report highlights RippleNet, a network of institutional payment providers like banks and money remittance services that use solutions built by Ripple. Yeah, so, and then it has this little infographic here. And this kind of, uh, if you're new to this, to XRP and uh, the problems that Ripple uses with the, plat solves with the platform, uh, this might help clear it up for you. So how it works, banks join RippleNet to process cross-border payments in real time with end-to-end -end tracking and certainty. Available in 55 countries across six continents, RippleNet makes it easy to connect and transact across, robust, across a robust network of financial institutions. With RippleNet, financial institutions can expand payment offerings to help new markets that are otherwise difficult and expensive to reach. Yeah, so, and it doesn't even go into talk about like some of the big problems that Ripple solves for banks. One of them is the, I believe it's called correspondent banking, uh, where you know, let's say you're a bank in the United States and you're, you're dealing with banks in Mexico or the Philippines. Let's use the Philippines, for example. The bank in the United States needs to keep a bunch of capital deployed over to the bank in the Philippines. 
And likewise, the bank in the Philippines needs to keep a bunch of capital deployed at the bank in the United States so that they can do these international transfers, I believe, through the SWIFT network. And so all that capital is locked up. And if they use RippleNet, that capital no longer has to be locked up because the settlement happens within three seconds. Uh, so powerful use case, powerful project. Where does that mean the price could go for XRP? I'm not a price guy. Uh, based on pure um, past performance and what some of uh, my favorite analysts are saying, we could see 7 to 10 7 to $13 XRP in the uh, intermediate term. Uh, that was supposed to happen already. If you're by, if you're uh, someone who believed in four-year market cycle theory, but that's over because we're past four years now. So now, if you're looking at extended market market cycle theory, and you're also factoring when in the price of Bitcoin, where is that going to go? Then it's possible XRP could go a lot higher than that. So mm -hmm. I'm going to probably start unloading some of that at around. Uh, maybe six, seven, eight, nine dollars a little bit, sell a little bit more around 10, 11, 12. That way, I'll have taken some profits, I'll have more than broke, broken even, and then I'm gonna hold some. I'm gonna hold some of this for like 10 years. I, I think I don't think this one's going anywhere. And I know, uh, I do know that XRP is probably the most hated crypto in crypto because it helps bankers get richer. At the end of the day, it does help bankers get richer. And I respect, I don't, you know, I'm conflicted because I used to be a gold bug. And uh, basically, you know, the Bitcoiners, the Bitcoin maxis especially, that Bitcoin is a much better gold. It's a, The tech is way better than gold. Um, and the ideology of a gold bug or a Bitcoiner is that, you know, money should be free and not centrally controlled. Uh, and Bitcoin does that better than any technology. So I, and Ripple is sort of helping the bankers who control everything uh, get even richer. So I understand why it's the most hated crypto in crypto, uh, but it is, uh, I don't think it's going anywhere. I think my thesis is that the people who run the show they're not going to lose power. That's my thesis. And that uh, Bitcoin's still going to have its place the way gold does. But I don't see uh, crypto displacing the entire financial world the way uh, I'd say a gold bug or Bitcoin, Bitcoin maxi does. Um, but I have mad respect for them. I do love the ideology of the maxis. It's just, and I, I'm totally a Bitcoiner. I, I mean, I, I'm a Bitcoin holder. In fact, some of these uh, smart coins are some of these, I should say, uh, altcoins, <laughs> smart coins. Some of these altcoins, for me, they're just ways to further stack more Bitcoin at prices that are way better than what I would get if I was paying USD right now. So some of us speculators, we can, <laughs> you know, we can buy some of these altcoins and they go way up against Bitcoin in certain areas, in certain certain phases of the market cycle. And if we're smart enough to trade, then it's the equivalent of getting a Bitcoin for like two or three or four thousand dollars USD. So it's a game that's risky to play, but it's fun and I like playing it. And so, yeah, a little bit of a rant there. A little bit of a, I got a little random. It's the caffeine is kicking in. Uh, OK, let's move on to the next one. Uh, I was happy to see the Songbird price moving up about 10 percent today. Uh, this is good because this project you know, we, some of us have been feeling frustrated. I haven't because I've been a developer and technology uh, tech lead as well. And I know that uh, technology takes a while to get right. And you have to, you have all kinds of problems. And you don't discover these problems until you're out there getting real world use often. I mean, you could talk about test driven development and all that, but sometimes that's just not going to cover it all. And so what Flare Network is doing is they, they launched the uh, Canary Network with the token Songbird so they can get real accurate test data. And the, this has been a great approach for them because there were some funky clunkers in the, uh, in the Canary Network. And it's better that they're in the Canary Network getting worked out now than if we were launching the full scale Flare Network at scale, ready to handle, you know, enterprise level decentralized finance. It's like that would have been not a smart move. So these guys, this team is on it. And it's nice to see that uh, the 
the price is moving up because it's had a long downward trajectory. You know, it, it went through that airdrop dynamic where you get your airdrop, maybe it blows up for a second or not, and it just crashes ultimately until the project really gets out there and gets going. And so these guys are making moves every day. Every day there's stuff going on. You can see um, commits and merges happening on the, in their GitLab repository. And this was in from Flair today uh, on Twitter. And I quote, the state connector is now live on Songbird. More information on what this means for the whole of blockchain tomorrow. Yeah, so this is going to probably be some great news because I believe the state connector is related to how easy it becomes to integrate other blockchains with Flare Network and Songbird or Canary Network, I should say. So this is just more and more... Um, proof that these guys are moving forward. So I'm excited about that. Um, there's some good DeFi opportunities, in my opinion, on uh, Flare Network. It, it's just like there's so much power there. So I'm excited about that. And then finally, I'm really excited to see this one moving up, Aleph Zero. So if you haven't heard of Aleph Zero, I've done a deep dive on this. I'll, li I'll leave the video at the end of this video. Here is another powerhouse project. Powerhouse team, um, this one, this project you could use for so many use cases. And this is just about enterprise level at scale transactions. And it can be used for so many different use cases. And the team is epic. And so this thing has been, you know, I mean, this thing was down to under a dollar, like back in February. And now it's up over 100%. So... Uh, and I think that this one has a long way to go up. I don't know where. And unfortunately, there aren't enough. This this project is so new, it's still not on enough analysts' radar. But it, it's going to get there because the LF Zero has got a passionate community behind it. And it's a real solid project with real solid fundamentals. So uh, as, as the word continues to get out there, we're going to get more analysts into LF Zero technical analysts, I should say, and then we'll probably get some good price predictions on it. Uh, but, you know, if I was just to pull something out of thin air, I don't, $10 is probably a piece of cake, not too in the intermediate term, and 100 200 I don't know. I really don't. I, I don't make price predictions, but uh, it's exciting to see this one moving. I know a lot of people are really excited about this. So, yeah, good stuff today, and the whole market's really blowing up. So, Hats off to all those strong hands that made it through January, February, and, and most of March. Because, I mean, if you're, if you're able to hold through that, then you are in crypto. And you know, you know this place. God, I've been in this. Oh, yeah, I don't even want to talk about it. But, yeah, it's like this stuff's nothing to me. Like the last few months, I'm like, I don't even, I'm not phased by it at all. In fact, I was just kind of hoping, I, wishing I had more dry powder to pick some more up. I just, I just didn't. Uh, but my bags are good and, uh, I'm excited for what's coming this year. It could be an extended market cycle. Uh, we'll see what happens. It's starting to look like it. Like I said, I've been saying on my videos, if you watched, I do not believe this is the bear market of crypto. Not yet. Uh, no way. And I could be wrong. And if it is, I'll just, I'll just buy more this year because crypto, I know, I know I, I'm, I'm pretty confident in it. I'm 100% confident in it. So that's it. I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, this is definitely not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. I am just a, uh, a uh, web developer, software developer, crypto investor. Uh, I love decentralized finance. That's one of my favorites. Just sitting here having some green tea and uh, bringing you some content. So hopefully you can do your own research and, and jump into the space full force. All right? Uh, it'll change your life.